let's go into the cloud and run Kubernetes on the Google Kubernetes engine or GKE. First, what we're going to do is create a shell uh, by launching Google Cloud Shell, and then we'll provision a Kubernetes cluster. Once we provision the cluster, we'll talk to the container registry called uh, Google Container Registry, and we'll push out an application back into this uh, Kubernetes engine cluster. Once that's done, we can expose the port and have a load balance application waiting for us. So just a reminder of what Kubernetes cluster looks like. It's something quite large, right? So you would create this abstraction here where there would be a cluster with a master. So that would be what Google Kubernetes engine is doing. And it's controlling these nodes and these nodes have multiple containers inside. And so a pod has multiple containers and then inside of the node, there's multiple pods. So it's a very complex structure that can scale up and down. And that's really what we're doing here by uh, provisioning this Google container uh, engine and also allowing Kubernetes to run in it. Okay, so next up, what we'll do is go to the Google Cloud here and uh, kind of set things up. So really the first step in running in something on the Google Cloud shell is to set the proper compute zone. So we want to know where we're working. We'll work in the central region. Great. Once that's set up, then I'll create a cluster. And this will take a little bit of time to uh, create a cluster here. It'll take a few minutes. So we go through here and we say cloud container, uh, actually G cloud container cluster create, and we'll say uh, cloud for data. There we go. I'll go ahead and authorize the cloud shell. And then this will go through behind the scenes here and uh, set up the pod, uh, set up the different uh, parts of the architecture. And again, it's a very complex system that's being provisioned for us. But fortunately, we can interact with it at a very high level because of the automation around the API. Okay, great. So we have our cluster running. You can see the key uh, items here where here's the name, the location and the central region. We also show the version of the master software, the IP address of the master node, the machine type and the node version and the number of nodes. So there's three nodes running. And again, if we go back to this diagram here, you can see here how each of these nodes could contain many pods, which also can contain many uh, containers. So let's go back here to uh, uh, authenticate now. So if I run G Cloud Container Clusters create, that would create it. But what I want to do next here is actually authenticate to this uh, environment so I can control it. So I'm going to type in G Cloud Container Clusters get credentials and then the name of my cluster, which is Cloud for Data. Great. So that looks like uh, we're, we're set here. And the next thing I'll need to do is deploy an application. So let's go ahead and uh, do this. So I'll paste in this command kubectl create deployment hello server dash dash image equals gcr.io and then the name of the image. So this is the actual container registry right here. So this is where you would need to point things if you're deploying them to the, the Kubernetes hosted service. All right, that looked like that was uh, very straightforward. Next up here, what I can do is create a service and this service will create a load balanced environment so that I can handle traffic and it will scale up and down for me. And I'm going to expose it via port 8080. Perfect. Now that that's set up here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the output of get service. kubectl CTL get service. If you notice here that look, the external IP address is pending. That means it's still provisioning this load balanced environment. It's not yet ready to be exposed to the outside world. Uh, so if I run this again, you can see it's still pending. So I would need to keep refreshing this until uh, it gave me an external IP address. And once this external IP address is available, that means that I can actually access that service. There we go. So now our service is available and you can see that it's the external IP address is 35.222.100.99. And this is the external port, which is port 8080. So let's go ahead and take a look at that service. We'll put this IP address in here, put in 8080, and you'll notice that 
there we go, I'm able to run this uh, service. So uh, in a nutshell, uh, it's fairly straightforward to run things with Kubernetes as long as you're using a high level abstraction in the cloud. And this is one of the key advantages of cloud computing. Now, the final step for us here would be to uh, delete the cluster. So what I'm going to do here is um, run a command that will delete this and we'll say gcloud container clusters delete and we'll put in the name of our cluster. And yes, we do. And now it's very important to note that if this was a production environment, you wanna be very careful about just you know ad hoc deleting clusters uh, back and forth but this is a sandbox environment and I want to delete it. There we go. So I've now cleaned up the Kubernetes service.